Hello all, Ben Shute here. I haven't created any videos in a little while because it's been a rather eventful time with many new developments, um, not least of which is that I'm now living in Scotland, uh, teaching at the University of St Andrews Music Centre. In fact, I'm on my way up there on the bus just now and uh, I'm grabbing a few minutes to just share a few thoughts on Schmelzer's uh, achingly beautiful Harmonia a cinque, uh, meaning simply in five parts. So the piece is fascinating in many regards. It's um, it predates the era of the solo concerto, um, and it's basically a consort piece whose uppermost voice is a rhapsodic solo violin line. So, in my view, it's very suitable not only as a concert work, but also for pedagogical purposes. Um, and parenthetically, it programs very well on things like student recitals, um, in case that plants any seeds. But um, I just, I just adore the pieces. I, I, really, probably one of my favorite pieces of all time. So I, I thought I'd just share a few thoughts on it, as well as um, what I feel is the need for a new edition, which I've actually created and made available um, for free on IMSLP. So a few things about the piece, just to start off. Um, as the title suggests, it's in five voices. Um, just one player per part, except that the lowest voice is doubled with continuo. Um, but Schmelzer takes the indication a cinque beyond that, because it's not only in five voices, it's in five beautifully proportioned sections, and the fourth of the five sections is in 5-4 meter, which itself is quite striking. You don't find many examples of a quintuple meter, um, especially at this period. I think it's uh, is this... The, 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 we don't have a score in, or a, a source in, in Schmelzer's hand, but the uh, manuscript we do have is from 1668, so, um, you know, quite early, mid-17th century. Um, and to find something with a quintuple meter at that point is really quite interesting. I do believe there are precedents in uh, bohemian folk music, I think, um, but not too much in the, you know, the so-called classical literature. There is one uh, in nomine by the name of uh, Truss by um, Christopher Tye from about a hundred years earlier, which has a quintuple meter. But um, really, apart from that, it is very scant, so I think it's really fascinating that, that Schmelzer incorporates that. So there's a lot that can be said about interpretation of the piece, of course, um, and I think I'll probably leave that maybe for another video at some point. Um, but I did want to just, at this point, sound a cautionary note that uh, every edition and recording that I'm familiar with actually transmits several errors, um, the most egregious of which actually is misreading two measures of note for two measures of rest. And um, I I'll play you what I mean. Have a listen to the upper voice. You'll hear that it enters and then immediately after entering quite abruptly stops and then two measures later enters on an unprepared dissonance which would really be pretty unthinkable um, given the contrapuntal language that Schmelzer is using. Um, so I'll, I'll play you a recording from a university ensemble that, that I was directing. At that point I was just trusting the scores that I had. I hadn't done my due diligence so don't be like me. But um, this will give you an example of what I mean. So you see, it, it really is quite an awkward effect. Um, so to correct that and other errors, um, I've, as I mentioned, created my own edition. I'll put a link to that uh, in the notes below the video, just so that um, anyone who wants to can use that in the future. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to do with this edition was to make the the string scoring a little bit more flexible. So the, the upper voice is, is clearly a violin, but um, even that can be flexible because actually when you look at the violin part, uh, it is within register of several tunings of the piccolo violin as well. Um, so uh, in the parts that I've created, I've included, um, the, you know, as it would be played on the regular violin, um, but then also uh, parts for a couple of different tunings for piccolo violin. The middle three voices are all called uh, viola di braccio, but of course that's a flexible term. It just basically means um, arm viol. Uh, it, it means an, an instrument belonging to what we would now call the violin family, which is a little bit ironic because violin, violino, is actually a diminutive of viola, so we call the whole family by the diminutive. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, the point is that the three middle voices, while they're called viola di braccio, all it means is a member of what we would call the violin family. 
Um, so the, the uppermost of those three voices, the second voice down below the more rhapsodic violin line, um, does also fall within the register of the violin. So that could be played on viola or violin, so I've included parts in both treble and alto clef. Um, and then uh, for the next voices down, the third and fourth voice down, um, the score you know, has indicated viola di braccio, but the parts indicate viola di gamba. Again, we don't have materials from Schmelz's own hand, so the extent to which these assigned instruments are actually assigned by Schmelzer, we, we just don't know. Um, so anyway, there's some flexibility there. So I've included uh, parts in alto and tenor clef, um, and then, of course, the continual line. So I hope that that flexibility will um, facilitate more different performance circumstances, uh, depending on available players, um, but also just give more opportunities to hear the piece with different instrumentations and um, the different timbres that those changes can bring out. So as I said, I'll uh, include a link to my new edition in the notes below, and I just hope that that encourages and allows more performances of this really fantastic and special piece. Um, as I say, it's just really, I think, one of my favorite pieces of all time, and I just hope others will get a chance to enjoy it as much as I have. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you have a chance to check out the edition, um, always happy to hear what you think and uh, more content coming soon.